Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to talk about solutions. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of our uploads. Let's dig into it. So, chemical compounds. We divide chemical compounds into two different groups. One is non-electrolytes and the other one is electrolytes. What is the difference? So, if you put a non-electrolyte compound into the water, they just stay in the molecule state. So they cannot conduct electricity because for conducting electricity, you basically need ions in water, but they don't produce ions. They just stay in molecule state. So they don't, they cannot conduct electricity. On the other hand, we have electrolytes. When you put them in the water, they dissolve in water and they dissociate into ions, a positive ion and a negative ion. So they can conduct electricity. So uh, we have some examples of non-electrolytes. Urea and monosaccharides are non-electrolytes. And when you put them in water, as you can see, they produce molecules. They didn't dissociate into ions. They just stayed there in a molecular form. And they produce something called hydration shell. This is just simply cluster of uh, the uh, water uh, molecules around this molecule. It can be urea, it can be monosaccharide. And... And these are simply hydrogen bond. They produce hydrogen bond with water molecules. And uh, the solubility of the organic compounds actually depends on two different things. The length of the carbon chain. So as you know, carbon chains make the molecule nonpolar. And because the water is polar, it uh, the polar uh, compounds can uh, dissolve in water better. So when the length of the carbon chain becomes more and more longer carbon chain, uh, that molecule can dissolve in water less and less. And it depends on substituents as well. It depends if they have polar substituents or nonpolar, if the compound has more polar substituents so it can dissolve better in water or any other polar uh, solvents. So electrolytes. As you can see here, this is just an example. And when you put them in water, they dissociate into two different ions, a positive and a negative ion. And these ions can conduct electricity. That's why we call them electrolytes. So the extent of dissociation, actually we have two different phenomenon, a dissociation degree, we uh, just uh, show it with alpha, and dissociation constant, KD. These are important for uh, those compounds that dissociate, basically electrolytes. So dissociation degree or alpha, if you just look at here, we have an, if you put AB, this is just a simply compound like a compound like NaCl. If you put put that into water at the beginning, you have x amount of AB and zero amount of this. This is just the beginning, and after some time, just y amount of AB does uh, dissociates into A plus and B minus, and because the ratio is one to one, these are y and y as well. So, if like two moles of AB just does uh, dissociates into A plus and B minus, you produce two moles of A plus and two moles of B minus. So uh, about the dissociation degree alpha, this is this is the formula of that. So it's just A plus at the at the equilibrium. So basically y, and amount of A B concentration of A B at the the time zero. So basically x. So um, the range of alpha, it can be from 0 to 1. 
And it depends of the concentration of how much of AB. It depends of how much AB you put into the water. You can change the dissociation degree. On the other hand, we have dissociation constant or KD, and it's basically simply an equilibrium constant for dissociation. So, as you can see, if you for all equilibrium constants, we have this formula. It's like these concentrations A plus B minus over A B. And these, all these concentrations are the concentrations at the uh, equilibrium. And because KD is like just a constant, equilibrium constant, it does not depend on the concentration. So if you put two moles or four moles of AB, the diso dissociation constant is constant you cannot change it but the dissociation degree depends on that so it's going to be different if you add two moles or four moles so in this table we can see uh the different ranges for electrolytes we have strong electrolyte and weak electrolytes and as you, as I uh, uh, as we see before, alpha can be from zero to one. So if it's less than zero point one, it's a weak electrolyte. And if it's between zero point one to one, it's a strong electrolyte. And KD the range, it can if it's more than ten to power of minus four it's a strong electrolyte. And if it's less than 10 to the power of minus 4, it's a weak electrolyte. And we have different examples here for strong, like ACL. As you know, it's a strong acid, so uh, it dissociates very well, almost completely. Um, HI, H2SO4, NaCl, NaOH. And for a weak electrolyte, H2SO3, NH4OH, H2S, H2CO3, and most of organic acids and bases are weak electrolytes. Yep, that's it for today. Thank you so much. Bye.